Hello again, we meet again in chapter 20 and then we're going to talk more about sustainable marketing, social responsibility, and ethics. The topic of the chapter is about sustainable marketing, social criticism of marketing, consumer action to promote sustainable marketing, business action towards sustainable marketing, about marketing ethics, and at the end it will be closed with the sustainable company. We will start first by try to define sustainable marketing. This is by meeting needs of consumer while preserving the ability of future generation to meet their needs. Therefore, the company should make sure that when they do their marketing effort, they not only pay attention on the customer's needs or the current customer needs, but also try to pay attention on the future generation needs. There are several social criticisms of marketing. It will be give impact on the individual customers. The first one is high prices, deceptive practices, high pressure selling, sooty harmful, harmful and unsafe product, plain obsolescence, poor service to advantage customer. We're gonna start with the marketing impacts on individual consumer. There are some customer complain about the high cost of distribution. The complaint of customers describe that their price are too high due to high cost of distribution, advertising, and promotion, and excessive markups. So there here, uh, the customer tried to give some criticism that why there's a lot of marketing product that put a lot of high price on their product. The response to it, we have to understand that when we did some uh, business, we need to operate uh, daily activities on how to make the product and then how to also spend a lot of money on utilities, on electricity and then in order to let them know about the product, advertising is something that we have to do and we have to pay for it. And um, we need to also pay distributor to make sure that the product be available on the market. Some customer not really recognize about it but we know that there's some cost of doing business. The second criticism is about deceptive practice. There are some complaints came from the consumer that the companies use deceptive practices that lead consumer to believe they will get more value than they actually do. The practices fall into three categories. The first one, deceptive pricing, deceptive promotions, and deceptive packaging. Here are some examples when some business or restaurant, they try to practice deceptive in pricing. They try to put a higher price to the consumer when they, when they buy some food or meal with similar uh, features, but with higher price. And we try to see that uh, some businesses or some restaurant, they try to make use of uh, some event or make use some location in order to put a high price but not all this practice of putting high price is actually because they try to take benefit or take advantage of the customer but there are some of the business that they try to provide a good service because the the rareness of the product the rareness of the food that makes they put a high price this is an example of deceptive in promoting and you can see from the picture that in order to put it on the advertisement, the, preparat uh, the preparation times need approximately four hours while when they being uh, served to the consumer is only required three minutes. Therefore, we know that there sometimes uh, it is really takes time for a marketer to put the best or the ideal picture of their product to attract consumer. For some customer, this is considered as deceptive of promotion. They're not really put the reality into uh, the real product or the real uh, picture into the real service to the consumer. Another social criticism of marketing is came from deceptive practices. There are some response that supports the legislation to protect customer from deceptive practices. So as a marketer, you have to make sure that you make a clear lines 
there is not deceptions, not alluring, not puffery, or exaggerating the effect of your product. You have to make sure that your product is not harmful. You have to make sure that your product not provide a little benefit to your consumers, and you have to make sure that the product are made very well. Another criticism is about high pressure selling. There are some complaints from the consumer that the salesperson use high pressure selling that persuade people to buy goods they had no intention of buying. Just for example, there's a lot of telemarketer they call for a customer and they force the consumer to buy their insurance or their service or their product and it make consumer feel not comfortable and it annoy consumer. There is some response to it. Most selling involves building long relationship and value consumer. High pressure or deceptive selling can damage the relationship. And you have to make sure as a marketer, you have to manage your salesperson for not being forcing or not being uh, giving some pressure to your customer because it will influence a lot on how you build your relationship with your customer. Another deceptive practices is from shooty, harmful, or unsafe product. Some complaints from the consumer that the product have a poor quality, provide little benefits, and can be harmful for the customer. There are some response to it. Good marketers realize that there is no value in marketing from a shooty, harmful, or unsafe product. So we have to make sure that our product is safe, it not contains too many chemical products, and it makes sure that it always maintains the health of the customers. Here is some example from a bad and harmful product from one sandals from China that contains a lot of chemicals that will be finally burn the skin of the customers. Another example of deceptive practices is came from the plan obsolescences. What is plan obsolescences? Sometimes when you buy a smartphone, you just buy the newest version of your smartphone but on the next year, there's a new version of your in the same series of your smartphone. That's annoy customers, but there's some response to it. The consumer complains that the producer calls their product to become obsolete and change consumer concept of acceptable styles to encourage more and earlier buying. The response to it, the planned obsolescences, is really the result of competitive market forces leading to ever-improving goods and services. Consumers like style change and wants to have latest innovation. So actually, the background of this is because of the competitions and then the technology, the advance of technology is always improving. And the consumer itself, they always want to have something new. They always save their preference and then they always want to have newest innovation that finally creates some obsolescences to a technological product. Another deceptive practices is a poor service to disadvantaged customers. There are some complaint came from the consumer that American marketer serve disadvantaged consumer poorly. Some retail companies put some red line poor neighborhood and avoid placing stores there. So there are some critics actually, uh, this is given to one of the retailers in the United States, it is Walmart and other retailers, they try to give some stereotyping about one area that uh, is quite poor and uh, have a low economics and they are avoiding that kind of place to put their retailers because they thought that there will no one, uh, it will be not potential, it will not be profitable. The response to it, some marketer profitably target these customers and the Fred Trade Commission has taken an action against marketers that do advertise false value, wrongly deny service or charge disadvantage customer too much. So the one that is a part of this is when you try to give a bad service to a poor customer or a less profitable customers. This is the same thing as a poor service. How you see the marketing impacts on society as a whole. Sometimes marketing 
will give some impact on the customer so consumer would have some false wants and too much materialism and too few social goods and the last one is cultural pollution the explanation for false wants and too much materialism it is came from the complaint of the consumer the marketing system urged that much interest in immaterial positions people are judged by what they own rather than who they are creating false ones that benefit industry more than they benefit customers. So when someone watch on the advertisement, sometimes uh, at the end, it will be influenced them to buy, even though that they actually not really need it. And it's more on the materialism product. So this is not what they need. They just want it because they saw it from the advertisement. There are some response to it. People do have strong defense against advertising and other marketing tools. Marketers are more effective when they appeal to existing rather than creating new ones. The high failure rate of new products shows that company cannot control the demand. So the response to it is actually people should have some filters to see advertisements so they will be able to control themselves for not buying something they actually not really need. And uh, the one, the things that the marketer do is actually they try to uh, bring some effective advertisement to give some appeals or to attract customer. And um, if they don't do so, uh, they will not be able to compete with the other competitors. The second criticism toward impact on society as a whole is came from too few social goods. There are some complaints that business oversell private goods at the expense of public goods and require more public goods to support them. According to its definition, social good is something that benefits the largest number of people in the largest possible way, such as clean air, clean water, healthcare, and literacy. And sometimes, as a marketer, we miss to see this part uh, to give impact or positive impact toward the society. The response to it, there's need to be a balance between private and public goods. Producers should bear full social costs on their operation and consumers should pay the social costs of their purchase. So the thing that the company do actually in order to overcome this is by providing social responsibility for the society, by providing scholarship, for the poor student and then help to build a school and then invest uh, to several library and improve on um, several uh, housing and uh, people's education that help society and is part of the activity that bear by the company in order to help the society. Another social criticism for the society is cultural pollution. There are some complaints that marketing and advertising create cultural pollution. Just for example, globalization and Americanization is one of the uh, things that has been um, thought by a lot of consumers. It brings a lot of cultural pollution. So the uh, original uh, cultural will be vanished and they try to follow another culture. The response to it is the marketing and advertising are planned to reach only a target audience and advertising makes radio and television free to user and help to keep down the cost of newspaper and magazine. Today's consumers have an alternative to avoid marketing and advertising from technology. What they try to say here is that people can choose actually to adopt good culture or bad culture and they have some choice to actually try to maintain their own uh, original culture and then they cannot avoid information but they can make some decision to control uh, what kind of information they would like to adopt and what kind of information they are not the the advance of technology is actually they try to provide some option for the consumer to choose which information they can accept and which information they want to receive or not just for example through the technology of permission-based marketing Consumerism is the organized movement of citizens and government agency to improve the right and power of buyers in relation to sellers.
In consumerism, they advocate, there is some advocate call for the right to be well informed about the important aspect of the product, the right to be protected against questionable product and marketing practices, the right to influence product and marketing practices in a way that will improve the quality of life, and the last is the right to consume now in a way that will preserve the world for future generations consumers. Environmentalism is organized movement of concerned citizens, businesses, and government agency to protect and improve people's living environment. Environmentalism for marketing is means that environmental sustainability is by getting profits while helping to save the planet. There are several environmentalism sustainability principles. The first one is pollution prevention. The second one product stewardship. Third one, design for environment, new clean technology, and the last one is sustainability vision. And pollution prevention involves not just cleaning up waste, but also eliminating or minimizing waste before it's created. You have to make sure as a marketer, when you try to do the operation or production of your product, you don't have any access that will try to harm for the environment. The product stewardship is involving minimizing the pollution from production and all environmental impact throughout the full product life cycle. While the design for environment is involves thinking ahead to design products that are easier to recover, you reuse, and also cycle. New clean technology involves looking ahead and planning new technology for competitive advantage. The advance of technology will have to it. Just for example, for new clean technology is the use of solar, wind power, and also nanotechnology. Sustainability vision is a guide to the future that shows the company that the company's product, process, and policies might evolve and may, and what is needed to be get there. Therefore, all the companies and all the businesses, they have to make sure that they put the sustainability vision as a part of their visions. There are five sustainable marketing principles. The first one is consumer-oriented marketing, consumer value marketing, innovative marketing, sense of mission marketing, and the last one is societal marketing. In a consumer-oriented marketing, as a marketer, you have to make sure that few marketing activities from the consumer point of view, and you have to make sure also to deliver superior value. Consumer value marketing means that you have to invest in consumer value building marketing and create value only for consumers. Innovative marketing means that the company seek real product and marketing improvements. The sense of mission marketing, you have to make sure that your company divine mission in a broad social terms rather than a narrow product terms. You can see a lot now that a lot of company always put the social mission and vision on their uh, company's vision and mission. It's not only focus on how they try to develop their product. Societal marketing means that the company should consider these three things. The first one, consumer wants and interests. The second one is company's own requirement. And the last one is society's long run interest. Corporate marketing ethics are broad guidelines that everyone in the organization must follow that cover distribution relations, advertising standards, consumer service, pricing, product development, and general ethical standard. Ethical standards sometimes represent true an ethical code. Each company usually have their own ethical code and they have to make sure they do all the practice in line with the ethical codes that have been set by them. At the end, you have to make sure that your company is a sustainable company. You goes beyond caring for the needs of today's consumer and has concern for tomorrow consumer and the broader world. On year 2020, World Economic Forum issued a hundred rank of company from the most sustainable company to uh, the big 100 sustainable company. Among them is a company who using a wind power in order to 
working on their production and then it will uh, reduce a carbon emission for 83 percent that will helps a lot to make the world is even greener greener you can see more the information from forbes.com the three pillars of sustainability is people planets and profit for all the business they have to pay attention on people or social and they have to make sure that they save the planet while they also make a profit that will help them economically this is the end of my explanation about sustainability marketing i hope that you can get something from all the information here if you have some question do not hesitate to ask through microsoft team see you again in the next opportunity god bless you